Well, I'm so delighted to be sharing these beautiful verses from the Bible with you. And this, these are the, at, at the end, you know. And I heard one, one, one preacher telling a congregation, you know, read the end of the book, we win. Just go to the end of the book, we win. When things in this world seem to be um, in so much turmoil, the church seems to be under pressure in the West and <clears throat> even um, in other parts of the world, being persecuted and so on. But we win. Revelation 21 and 3. John speaking, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them. Just imagine that God coming and dwelling with us. You know, one of the names given to Jesus is Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Oh, Emmanuel. God with us. This is something we cannot even begin to fathom. But it's something we long for. We long to be with God. We long to have communion, to have fellowship with God. He will dwell with them. They will be his people. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. Wow. No longer any separation. You know, in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve uh, disobeyed God, they rebelled against God, in came death, which was separation from God. And throughout the Bible, we see the Word of God, Isaiah writing, Your sins have separated you from me. Your iniquities have brought a separation from God. The wages of sin is death, the Bible says. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are separated from God. And it's only when an individual recognizes his sin and his need for God, he comes to God and he asks for forgiveness. God is able to forgive him based upon the death of Jesus. He is the sacrifice for our sins. That is the reason why he died on the cross. He is the sacrifice for our sins. So now we can be forgiven and now we can be reconciled to God, brought back to God. So now we're in fellowship with God. But it's still we're still affected by the society in which we live in. We still have our sinful human nature. We, so many things coming against us. <clears throat> but in the new heaven and the new earth, for all eternity, all the evil is going to be done away with. <clears throat> Satan's going to be removed. He's going to be out of the picture. Our body's going to be changed. We're going to have um, a new uh, spiritual body. We wouldn't, have, wouldn't be subject to sin anymore and sickness and decay. But the Bible says God is going to be with us as our God. It's going to be all perfection, all joy, all love, all peace, all harmony. We will be with God. He's going to be dwelling with Him. We're able to look upon Him, have fellowship with Him, have fellowship with one another for all eternity. Think about it. You know, sometimes you go to visit friends or relatives that you love dearly. Our friends are just gathering around. They're having some chips, maybe some pop or, you know, laughing, chatting. It's such a wonderful time when you gather together and you, you're having such a wonderful fellowship. But then there comes a time when you say, okay, well, you know what? We've got to go now. Someone's tired. They have to go to bed. I've got to work tomorrow and things like that. And you have to separate. But in heaven, beloved, nothing like that. We will be together for all eternity. No more separation. No more goodbyes. No more traveling to another country to visit your relatives or anything like that and have to be separated and say goodbye. We're going to be together for all eternity. It's going to be awesome. I tell you, heaven is a place to look forward to. That's why we need to live for Jesus today. Amen. Bless God.